Hey, how's it going? This is Seth from retipster.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to send out a direct mail campaign with a website called click to mail using a certain type of yellow postcard. This is a type of postcard that I have sent out countless times. So if you want to send out postcards, you can go up here to mailing products and I'm on the home page right now and I am logged into my account. But once you click on this, uh, you go over here and as you can see, even among the postcards, there's several different sizes and dimensions of them. The one that I've always done is this one right here, the 4.25 by six inch postcard. So we'll click on that. And uh, what you can see here, if we scroll further down, uh, there's actually several different layouts that you can send with this particular size of postcard. The two that I've always worked with is this one right here, the single-sided postcard, and then also the double-sided postcard. And the idea with these, with the single-sided postcard, that little gray space you see on one side, that's all the space you have to write your message. And then on the reverse side, that's where the recipient's address, the postage, and your return address would go. However, However, if you want more space, this double-sided postcard allows you to write a message not only on the big broad side, but also on the same side where the address goes. And I think the benefit of this is that you basically just have another chance to catch your recipient's attention and you have more room to write out whatever you want to write out. So it's up to you. And obviously there's also these other versions here. Those could pretty much do a very similar thing to the double-sided postcard. I just haven't used these a whole lot. So if you want to experiment with those, feel free. And the nice thing about click to mail is that whichever template you choose, you can actually download a template in Word format or PDF or, you know, take your pick. I'm going to download the Word format. I'll just show you what happens when we download this. Okay, so when I open that up, and really what this is, is a Word document that has already been sized to the correct measurement. And they've overlaid these little images on here just so you can understand, hey, don't put your writing outside of these lines. Because if you do, they might get cut off. So I find that kind of helpful. And by the way, if you do download the postcard templates that I've put together with my actual copy that I've used many, many times before, it's been proven to get me a pretty decent response rate. Those templates are already sized to this standard and the text is within these lines, just so you know, if you decide to use those. But really, if we wanted to get started, all we'd have to do is click this, just delete it, get it out of the way. Same thing with all this stuff. Click delete, get rid of that. And I've actually got a, a different template I was gonna work with here, which as you can see, just shows test, 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 just to give you an idea of where that text would go. So I'm gonna be using this one and or this one over here as I go through this process. This is another similar thing. This is the double-sided template. This is just an example for like what could go on one side of it and then what could go on the other side. So like you could put a letter or something like that on this side and then more of like an eye-catching ad or something like that over on this side. It's really like up to you, however creative you can be to just catch that person's attention and say what you think they're going to respond to. So if we scroll back up here, so the first step as we're getting started with these postcards is to first of all decide which template we're using. So in this case, I'll just go with the single-sided postcard just for the sake of simplicity. And uh, when it comes to printing, so I'm actually going to do black and white. My postcards are very, very simple in that regard. It's not so much about the color that I use. It's more about the message that I put on it. And because the card stack that I'm going to be using is, you know, bright highlighter yellow, basically, that color usually ends up uh, catching people's attention pretty well. Uh, for paper, so again, this is the one I use, yellow 65 uncoated. I've tried the green in the past. I didn't find it to be quite as effective, at least when I got my test postcard in the mail. It didn't seem to jump out to me quite as well as the yellow did. And same thing with the white, obviously. It looks like every other white piece of mail that uh, most people get in their mailbox. Never tried pink. And I've actually heard from some other postcard marketers that like the uglier you can make your postcard, the better. You basically just want it to look different than everything else. But again, yellow is the one that uh, I always stick with. For production time, it's always next day. And for mail class, for this size of postcard and smaller, you have to do first class. You don't have any other options there. And then up here, so when it says quantity, as you can see in this pricing chart, the more you choose to send out, the cheaper the printing cost is gonna be. However, the postage does not change. So just keep that in mind. If you're sending out a ton of stuff, it's just gonna be less expensive, comparatively speaking, per postcard. Uh, a lot 
lot of times the mail campaigns that I send out when I'm using postcards, it kind of depends on the type of list I'm sending. If it's a very, very, very highly targeted list that I've spent a ton of time filtering down, sometimes I can get some pretty good results with just 500. However, if it is a less targeted list, something that I did not spend a ton of time on, in that case, probably like a thousand, maybe 1500, maybe even more uh, to get any real results. Or if you know your list is like a very specific number, you can just put that in there and you will see the price show up right down here. So anyway, go ahead and click on start job. And then the next step here is to get your document all figured out. And one thing I will say, pretty much every time I'm using click to mail, the mail that I'm sending out does not involve a mail merge. In a mail merge, if you're not familiar with that, it basically just allows you to insert variables throughout uh, all the different mail pieces you send out. So for example, you could say, hey there, first name, I saw your property on, you know, blank avenue or blank street. And depending on who the person is in your list and depending on what data you have in there, it can get really specific about each individual recipient so that they see their first name and they see the address of their property and, you know, fill in the blank, whatever you want to put in there, you can get really specific like that. However, I've found that click to mails uh, mail merge system that they've got, it's kind of clunky. I don't really love it. So usually when I'm sending out stuff with click to mail, the language of my postcard is going to be the same for everybody. I'll like start out the postcard with to whom it may concern, or I'll just get right into my message. I won't bother with inserting their name. I won't bother with inserting the address of their property, none of that stuff. So just so you know, if you do want to do a direct mail campaign that does involve a mail merge like that, the service I use for those types of campaigns is this one right here. It's ITI Direct Mail. If you go to retipster.com forward slash ITI, that'll bring you here. And uh, I've actually just found this website to be a little bit better in terms of customer service. I think the idea with click to mail, it's very much a self-serve website. Like if you get stuck or make a mistake, stake, you're kind of on your own. And again, with postcards that don't have a mail merge, it's actually kind of hard to screw it up because it's pretty simple and straightforward. And that's kind of why I like it. But uh, as soon as you start getting more complex and complicated, that's where this website comes into play. This is very much like click to mail, but uh, there's a lot more options you can choose from. So anyway, I've got a separate tutorial that can show you how a mail merge campaign works through this website. I'll link to that beneath this video as well. But uh, getting back to click to mail. So first thing here, we just have to select uh, the postcard template that we already put together, which again, in my case, is this Word document right here. Go ahead and click on this. We're going to upload it and I'll just drop the file right here and we'll just uh, keep it right there with that name. All right. Now, alternatively, we also could have clicked this create button. And if we were to go this route, just click continue. I'll just show you what this looks like. And this is not usually how I do it because I don't really like this system. I find it very clunky and hard to work with, but uh, this is where you could type out your own message right here in click to mail. But I just kind of like the control that I have in Microsoft Word or even something like Google Docs. So I do all my stuff there and then I upload it over here to uh, click to mail. So anyway, I never use this thing, but just so you know, if you want to monkey around with it, it's there for you. And uh, here we can see the thing that I just uploaded. So we're going to click that, click done. So now that we've got that all set, we'll go over here to mailing list. So I've never done this, but apparently you can purchase lists through click to mail. Now that may make sense for you, depending on who you're trying to send mail to. Uh, since I've never used it, I'm not even sure how much it costs, but the service that I use, and again, I'm a real estate investor and I'm sending out mail to a lot of property owners with an offer to buy their property, that kind of thing. And uh, typically the service that I'm using for this is called data tree. And uh, we've actually got discounted pricing to Datatree through our affiliate link to them, which is retipster.com forward slash Datatree. So if you want to check that out, feel free. Alternatively, whenever I do want to get those kinds of highly targeted lists that take a lot more time to sort through, however, they also get a very good response rate. There's also something called a delinquent tax list that I've used quite a bit. And I've got a pretty detailed blog post explaining what that is, uh, how to get it, how it works. So I'll go ahead and link to that beneath this video as well. So anyway, assuming I've already got my list all sorted, and by the way, that's a whole other process uh, that you usually have to go through. And again, I 
have a separate video explaining that in case you are getting your list from a service like DataTree. I've got a couple of videos explaining how to get that and how to sort it. But once you get through that process, your list is going to look something like this. This is like a super, super simple version. But as you can see here, I've got a column here with the recipient's name, their street address, city, state, and zip code. And again, part of the reason why this uh, Excel spreadsheet looks so clean and simple is because there's no mail merge going on. So there isn't a whole lot of additional variables or offer prices or addresses that I need to insert throughout my postcard. So that's why this looks so simple. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click this. And again, we're just going to find that file and upload it. Go ahead and choose the file. All right, so we've got the file in there. And the next step is to set the address layout. And what that means is we're just going to tell it, hey, which columns from that spreadsheet do we want to use as the recipient's name, address, city, state, and zip? And if we look back over at this spreadsheet that we just uploaded, we can see the names of each of the columns right here in row one. It's name, address, city, state, and zip. When we go over here, it's basically just going to find those column headers and we can decide which ones go where. And because I've got them labeled very clearly, this is a pretty easy process. We're gonna put the name in the recipient name column, the address in the address line column, and then city in the city, state in the state, in zip in the zip pretty simple there and then also what you're going to see up here is some of the actual addresses that it's pulling from your list you can click this arrow to see uh, the next ones the next ones and these addresses should match exactly what is on uh, your excel spreadsheet so for example i see this one here this was the fourth one down i should be able to go over here to the fourth uh, one here on my list and see that exact same name, address, city, state, and zip. And if I don't, then I know I've got a problem or it's not ordered correctly or I didn't select the right things here. So just so I understand how that works. So we're gonna go ahead and click save and then standardizing me and it's just putting it in the right format for the US Postal Service so that uh, they can understand these in case there's any inconsistencies there. Alrighty, so this was the one we just uh, uploaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, click done. And then the next one here, return address. So mine's already in here, but if this is your first time getting in here to click to mail it doing this, you'll probably have to actually specify what you want your return address to be. Quick hint, I probably would not put uh, your home address here because you don't want people showing up at your house for some reason. I don't ever put my personal name here. I think some people out there do, but again, I don't really do that. I try to keep it very business related. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have a separate dedicated business mailbox or mailing address yet, it's really easy to do. All you'd have to do is head over to a UPS store or pack mail or any kind of mailbox storefront and you can rent one there. Or you can do this online through a service like Traveling Mailbox, which allows you to set up mailboxes pretty much anywhere in the US and you can actually get your physical mail digitally. They'll like scan it and send it to you that way. It's super convenient. We've got a separate video review on that. If you want to check it out, it's up to you, however you want to set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and click save because that return address looks great. And uh, that's all set. So I'm going to go ahead and click done and then ancillary endorsement. So I don't usually do this, but if you uh, click on this, you can sort of see what this means. It basically just means that if there's any forwarding instructions, the postal service will do that for you, but it can also cost you more for every time they have to do that. So it's kind of up to you. Just so you know, if you do choose to do that, it can cost you a little bit more. And you can see it on here, uh, what the current cost of this campaign is gonna be. Now this list I uploaded is actually a really small list. There's only 313 recipients on here, and that's why that uh, number is so Below. But again, however many people you're sending mail to, that uh, is going to reflect in the price. Go ahead and click continue here. Okay, so it looks like it's showing us an error here. I'm actually glad it's doing this because I can show you what to do in case you happen to see this. So apparently there is uh, an address or two or three or 10 on our list that uh, don't have the correct addresses. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but let's go back and see what it's referring to. So if we go over here and click on this down arrow, we'll go click on the list we just uploaded. We'll click on edit here. And here we can see all the different addresses on our list. By the way, if we ever did want to manually add a recipient, we could do that right here. 
which is pretty simple. I usually include a postcard that's just mailed to myself just so that I can know, oh, okay, uh, all my recipients probably have gotten their mail on this day as well, or at least they're about to since I just got mine. So anyway, if you ever wanted to do that, you could do that here. But really what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to figure out what is this unmailable address. And I can apparently just click this to trash it, but I don't really know which one it is. Same thing over here for these non-standard addresses. So these are ones that uh, because the address format isn't quite right, there may be a lower chance of it actually getting to the recipient. I could trash that as well. But again, how do I know which ones I'm trashing? We can go up here and uh, click this thing and we can sort by, first of all, unmailable. And it's going to just show us whichever one was the problem. I can click on this. Let's see here. Edit it, see what's going on. Well, that's why it's not mailable because it doesn't have a state or zip code in there. So if I know what that is, obviously I could put that in here, but uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, I could guess, but it's just not there. So I'm not sure. So what I'm gonna do is just click this and trash it, get rid of that thing. And then likewise, we can go up here again and let's look for the non-standard addresses. And these are all of those. And I'd basically have to go through each one of these things one by one until they're all fixed. Or if I just don't want to risk sending mail to people that may not ever uh, receive it, I could just as well hit this trash button and delete them all. But it's basically just pointing out because it's not standardized, we don't know what's going to happen. Just be aware that if you do send out mail like this, there is a higher level likelihood that it's going to come back to you or just not get delivered at all. So I'm actually going to delete these in this case and uh, that will make my list even smaller and I won't be wasting postage on these non-standardized addresses and we'll save and close this. Now we can go on to the next step. Click continue here. All right now the next step is to view the proof and this is basically going to show us exactly what our mail piece is going to look like to the end user. Like this is literally what's going to get printed on the yellow cardstock that's going to get sent out. We'll click on view proof. This right here is what uh, every single one of our postcards is going to look like. And this has only shown me the first uh, three examples. So this isn't showing me everything. But, you know, if there was something in my message that I didn't like, say if I put, you know, a typo in there or anything like that, this would be my cue to go back and fix that and get it revised before I go ahead and send it out. I can also see what uh, my return address is going to look like up here and the recipient's address. It is an option to put like a peel and stick stamp on on these postcards, but uh, I'm just gonna have the postage printed on there in this case. I think the whole idea behind that peel and stick stamp is that it tends to look like it's a little bit more personal, like somebody actually like did this in their home and put a stamp on there and sent it out that way. But uh, I'm not gonna bother with that. So that's the proof and I'm good with how that looks. I don't have any problems there. So I'm gonna go back here and click on yes and then put my initials here and then I'm gonna add it to the cart. And then I'm going to finish checkout. And this is a summary of everything I just put together. Uh, and you can see the final price up here. You can see the individual price for postage and printing right down there. So assuming everything looks fine, we'll go ahead and proceed to checkout. And then uh, all I'd have to do is uh, decide how I wanna pay for this and place the order. Pretty much as simple as that. So. Again, click to mail. I don't think it's the right option for every single type of direct mail campaign. At least it's not the right option for all the types of mail that I've sent out. But again, when it's a super simple message without a mail merge, and I don't need a whole lot of customer service, and I don't want to like commit to paying for thousands and thousands of mail credits at a time. I just want to sort of do it a la carte whenever I want to. Click to mail is super fast and easy and convenient, and the pricing is great. And I don't have any kind of affiliate relationship with click to mail. They're not paying me for this. I don't make any money if you choose to use them. I just wanted to show you them because this is who I've used a lot. And for certain types of direct mail and applications, I think it can be a great option to use. So again, if you think a mail merge is something that you want to do in your direct mail pieces, go head over to retipster.com forward slash ITI. That's our affiliate link to letterprinting.net. And I can also include a video tutorial showing you how to set up a mail merge through that website. And in that video, I'm going to show you how to do this with letters, but the same principles apply to postcards. So that's all. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again soon.